My name is Brijesh Singh. I work at AMD Linux kernel team. Today I'm here to talk about AMD's new confidential computing technology called Secure Nested Paging or SNP. SNP is the latest generation of AMD SCV technology designed for the confidential computing. If you have been following AMD's work, this is not our first foray. In past, we introduced SCV and then we introduced the SCVES, which provides the encrypted state support. SNP builds upon existing SCV and SCVES feature and provides much stronger security guarantees. SCV and SCVES support is available in the first and second generation of the AMD Epic processor, whereas SNP support is starting available from third generation of Epic processor, which is announced this year. SNP is designed to protect a VM from a malicious hypervisor in a very specific way. It is especially useful in the cloud settings where a user may not trust the hosting environment or hosting environment does not have any interest in looking into user guest data. So just to recap, SCV provides memory confidentiality, SCVES added register state confidentiality, whereas SNP adds a new layer of protection through integrity. SNP is designed to protect the VM in a specific way. So from threat model point of view, it's a confidentiality is the first one. It prevents hypervisor from reading the guest data. Uh, it prevents in a way that uh, all the guest data or guest private data is encrypted with the AES-128. In addition to the confidentiality, the new thing in SNP is the integrity. It prevents hypervisor from modifying or replaying guest data. So the way I look at the integrity is it's a, uh, it uh, implicitly says that if a virtual machine is able to read the data, then it should read the data, whatever it last wrote. And that's the guarantee which SNP starts providing. SNP also provides protection against offline attacks such as a cold boot, etc. It also provides support against malicious interrupt injection. In SNP, there is also a new protection against the lying about the hardware capabilities through CPU ID. So the idea over here is that a guest owner can provide whatever the CPU ID values they want to expose to the, uh, to the uh, guest and uh, capability actually fil gets filtered through uh, PSP firmware so that the hypervisor cannot lie about it. There are certain things which SNP does not support. So for, uh, first most is the availability. Hypervisor still retains the full control about the scheduling and allocation. What essentially means is that a malicious guest will not be able to create a denial of service attack on a system. Then some advanced physical attacks are, are not supported such as voltage or data, data bus uh, type of attacks and certain side channel attacks such as the prime and probe. The security guarantee of SNP is enforced through the combination of hardware as well as the guest software. So how we do this uh, enforcement of the integrity? The way we do it is we have created this new big structure called a reverse map table RMP. And that is one RMP entry for the entire system. It is created by the software during a boot the basic property of RMP is it contains one entry of every 4K of assignable memory. RMP is indexed using a system physical address. An entry may be manipulated by a special x86 new instructions. Those instructions are RMP update and etc., which I'll cover a little bit later. RMP entry basically indicates the page ownership that who has the right capability. So for example, if a page is assigned to the guest, then only guest has the right capability to that page. Similarly, if a page is assigned to the hypervisor, then that page cannot be used as a guest private page. Or if a page is given to the firmware, PSP firmware, then x86 software will not be able to make any modification or write to it. So the way RMP checks are enforced is during the CPU page table walk. In case of a native page table walk, once, once, uh, once the virtual address gets translated to the physical address, then physical address is taken as an index in the RMP table, 
and the hardware is going to read the value from RMP table to determine uh, the writability of the particular uh, software. If it sees that the RMP entry says that the page should not be writable, then it generates a page fault, RPF. Uh, the things get a little bit tricky in, uh, in case of a virtualized machine because there is two page table, right? One is a guest page table and then a nested page table. So in this particular case, hardware does the walk for first guest page table then NPT and once it reaches to the NP uh, once it reaches to the physical address by walking the nested page table then uses that physical address to find the RMP entry for that particular page in addition to a typical in addition to typical writability it also checks the GPA one of the one of the entry inside the RMP table is the GPA where this particular page should be from a guest point of view if these checks do not pass then hardware is going to rage NPF we will look a little bit more detail in later slide about those NPFs. So next one is how we deal with this RMP fault if it happens on the host machine. So this strategy over here is we try to avoid having an RMP violation or RMP fault as much as possible. So the first thing we do is as soon, when the page gets added in the RMP table, it actually gets unmapped from the direct mapping. So the kernel addresses kernel should not be actually reaching out to that particular page. And if user space application on the host side attempts to write to a guest private memory, then he will get a sick bus. Things are a little bit interesting when it comes to the backing page support. So for example, if VMM allocates a guest memory, and if the guest memory is allocated from a two meg, a two meg entry from a large page, then while RMP checks are performed, one of the thing which hardware does it, it actually checks whether uh, it checks if all the page within that particular walk are in the same state. So what essentially that means is if a memory is accessed using a large page, then all the sub pages within that large page should have exactly same page state. So one of the example over here, what I'm trying to show is that, uh, let's say, for example, if you create a mapping for a particular virtual address using a 2 meg. And if you try to access that page, if one of the page within that two meg is a private, then hardware will raise a page, uh, page fault. And the way we resolve that particular page fault is by splitting the page to multiple of four, okay? And then just resume uh, the guest. In case of virtual machine, if, R if hardware encounters RMP check failure, then it's gonna uh, raise NPF. And there are a few bits, new bits added to the NPF in order to help us uh, resolve those particular faults. One of the bit is basically RMP bit, which tells it is RMP fault. Then there is a new bit called ink, which actually tells when guest was trying to access this particular page, what's the C bit it was using. And then there is a new bit for uh, size mismatch. For example, if the nested page table says the memory is uh, two meg, and hardware uh, on a basically guest OS is trying to access that or trying to p-validate that particular memory as a 4K, then uh, hardware is going to generate a nested page fault with the size mismatch error. In a summary, the resolve, resolution of the NPF is pretty straightforward. If we see a data write, and if the data write is for the C equal to one, then check the RMP table. If there is no entry in the RMP table, then add that particular page as a guest private page. Just because we added the page as the guest private page does not mean that guest will is still able to use that page as a private. There is another process which guests need to take in order to complete the uh, page state transition. Similarly, if we see a guest is attempting to access a page with C equal to zero, and if the page is not private in the RMP table, then we go and make it as a shared page. So during a CV ES development, one of the things which, which, which we worked on is the GSCV specification, guest host communication block specification. The idea behind this specification was that all other hypervisors will, uh, will implement this standard and they will, able to, uh, they will able to run any guest which supports the GSCV specification. The reason why this specification was developed is that in case of the CVE, the registry states are encrypted. So if, if, if uh, let's say, guest makes of uh, instruction, let's say CPU ID, 
if you mix the CPU ID instruction, then some uh, some values need to be uh, some register state information need to be passed to the passed to the hypervisor in order for him to assess it further. And so those uh, information get passed through this are defined in the GS specification, and then guest follows the specification to get the data to the hypervisor. Hypervisor reads the data from the GSCB page and whatnot. That since SNP builds on top of uh, ES, it makes use of the specification. But there are few things which GS, uh, which SNP adds; those were not present in the specification. So we enhance the specification with a few new more VMG exit. One of the VMG, uh, one of the most important VMG exit is the page state change. So the idea over here is that if guest wants to access a page as a private, then it will issue this page state transition or PSC a VMG exit to make a request. Similarly, there are other VMG exits added over here. You can take a look at it in the slide. I'm not gonna go through each of them in detail. Another one, uh, the important one is the guest message request. So one of the new thing which SNP adds is have guest capability to talk to the PSP. So in order for it to talk to the PSP, there is a new uh, VMG exit called guest message request. A guest can issue this VMG exit and hypervisor Bill passed down the information, whatever it has received from a guest to the PSP and let PSP execute. And once the PSP execution completes it, it comes back. Another important one is the AP creation. Uh, unlike the CVEs in SNP, guest VM can create APs. Uh, and in order to facilitate that, uh, you don't, uh, in order to facilitate that, you use the AP creation VMG exit. So as I was saying, one of the important part is that uh, uh, in this entire flow is the page validation, right? We get the fault saying, okay, page is not uh, added in the RMP table. You add the page in RMP table. Now guests need to take ownership and the way it does it by page validation. So typically then page validation is two step process. The first step is guest should issue a PSC page state transition request to the hypervisor so that page gets added in the RMP table. And once the page is added in the RMP table, then guest can issue a p-validate to validate that particular page. When guest is issuing the page state transition, it can actually batch multiple of the page state request in one operation. So as you can see on the right hand side, there is a structure which tells you we can batch up to 253 uh, entries in one, in one VMG exit operation. So this minimizes number of VMG exit which we have to take. Uh, in order uh, to do the page state changes, if uh, the, in 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 case of uh, in case of the PS, uh, PSC entry, there is this field called page size. So page size basically a zero means a four K page, one means a two meg page. So with the two fifty three entries, we can cover up to five hundred megabytes of data in one VMG exit. As you can see, the page validation is two-step process. It's going to require the VMG exit, then it's going to uh, require the p validated instruction. It can it it can take a little longer depending upon the size of the guest. There are multiple approaches we can at, at take to validate the page to validate the page basically validate all the system RAM. So one of the approach is that uh, we validate all these memory in the guest BIOS. So before the virtual machine gets launched, there are certain page which gets pre-validated. Uh, when what I mean by that, uh, those pages gets pre-validated is as a part of a guest launch, there is a command called launch update, which actually puts the OVM of our guest bias in the guest memory space. As the data is getting put in the guest memory space, those pages gets validated. So that's what this uh, picture is trying to show is that uh, before the first VM run is completed, there are certain pages in the guest memory which is already validated. And once system boots, OVMF takes over, OVMF in the PIE phase, very first thing it does, it actually detects the entire memory and goes through its validation cycle and validates all the pages. When it's validating, it actually requests the highest possible page size, which is two meg, so that we can minimize the number of uh, VMG exit and number of p-validate instructions, which we have to issue. Uh, another, another way to do this validation is actually do lazy validation. Lazy basically, you do validation on demand. And this approach, which we could do is, OVMF or guest bias can validate only the pages which it needs during its execution. And then there is a new a memory type called unaccepted memory type introduced in the EFI spec. 
And then OVMF or guest bias can build those uh, EFI memory type and pass it down to the guest OS. And guest OS can just validate the pages, which was not previously validated by the BIOS. So this uh, is a more of the future looking. We will be looking at this, adding the support after the base SNP is enabled. So now let's come back to the launch process. How's the typical launch works? So the very first thing we do is host OS initialize the AMD CV firmware. Uh, as a part of initialization, basically a new random uh, VM encryption key is created and that key gets loaded in the memory controller. Then host OS calls a bunch of command to put the initial image. So in this particular case, initial image is actually a OVMF image or guest BIOS image. It puts those image in the guest memory space and it starts running. A typical flow is basically, uh, if, if I start mapping this up in the PSP command sequence, then there is command called uh, guest context create, activate, start, update, and finish. So there are, uh, update is the command which is used for adding the pages in the guest uh, memory space. I will cover a little bit more in the next slide about the updates. So there are multiple types of the uh, multiple types when you are calling a launch update. So one of the first one is the page type normal. It means it is just a normal data page or instruction page which which a hypervisor wants to put into the guest memory space. Once he calls this, then all the contents of that particular page gets measured. Then you have a VMSA, which is typical register page. I don't want to go through all this. This it will just take a time. But one of the important one I want to cover is the page type CPU ID. So the idea about this is very special page. It can contain the CPU ID values, which hypervisor wants to give to the uh, to the guest OS. The idea is the PSP actually reads the value from this CPU ID page filters out any values which he sees as uh, security issues or if hardware is trying to lie out lying about certain capability which is not available then PSP is going to filter those out and uh, if there is an error, error then PSP will actually come back saying hey this entry doesn't look right. So in order to support the VM launch flow there are a few new commands that have been added in the KVM IOCTAL. Uh, so I do not want to go through all those things in detail, but uh, here are the typical st uh, commands which are added. And for QMU, we have added a new object to create an SNP guest. Uh, this object is part of our RFC2. We'll evolve it based on the community feedback. And there are a few new commands added uh, on the host side. So one of them is very standard. It's called SNP platform status. A host OS can call this command to query the uh, to query the CV firmware and all those other version informations. And then there is a, something called SNP get and set config. These uh, these commands can be used to set the system wide uh, a system wide TCV version, which will be reported during the attestation. So one of the big difference between the SCV and SNP is uh, when to query the attestation report, right? So if you remember in case of SCV or SCVES, attestation report was generated before VM was booted. So there was this command called launch major, which used to get the, attest which used to get the attestation report. But with SNP, that model is changed. In SNP, guest OS can request attestation report at any time and multiple time. So there are and there is a new driver added called SEV guest driver that provides a few IOCTAs. One of these IOCTAs is get report, which typically gets the report. And uh, while you are get querying the report, uh, you can provide some user supply data and stuff. You can see those all details in the specification. So where we are right now, right? So this is just the status of uh, where the SEV support is. So SCV got landed in 4.15, SCV ES is landed in 5.10. Pretty much uh, both the supports are already accepted, accepted upstream. Thing which is uh, right now we are working are uh, working is the live migration support. So there is two type of live uh, two type of live migration which is being currently discussed for uh, for SCV. One is a slow migration. So slow migration is basically uh, the pages gets migrated through the PSP and PSP is not one of the fastest processor. So uh, the encryption and decryption process is a little bit slower. So that's why we call it slow migration. Then there is another approach where uh, live, uh, where is a we call fast migration. In the fast migration, there is, a exit, there is a helper which can run inside the virtual machine and that can assist the migration. 
some of this discussion is actually going already upstream. So if you have any feedback, please uh, please provide those feedback or participate in those discussion. So just uh, on SAV SNP, where we are, right? So guest and host kernel patches have gone through multiple reviews. So right now they are uh, at the version number five. Uh, guest patches uh, and hypervisor patches both are posted upstream. And for OVMF, we are uh, at the version number six. For QMU, we have posted uh, recently the RFC V2. All these uh, patches is also available on our staging branch. So if somebody has Epic 3 processor, then uh, you can uh, uh, use the, our staging area to fetch all these and run yourself. So what is supported uh, in the current patch set? So in the current patch set basically supports uh, a basic SCV SNP guest launch. It provides uh, most of the uh, features provided by the hardware, except there are a few which I will cover a little later. So one of the things which of course it does is provides the attestation report driver, so you can query the attestation. And it also has support for this filtered CPU ID value where hardware can, or uh, PSP firmware can filter out the values. And uh, it also supports the allocating the backing pages either from a 4K zone or from a, a large zone, which is basically THP and stuff. And so in as I said, in, very, in, in the current implementation, guest BIOS is the one which validates the entire, uh, entire guest RAM. So guest OS doesn't need to do any validation. It only uh, need to, if he's trying to make a page as a shared page, then he may need to make use of those PSC and uh, P validate to unvalidate the pages, but it doesn't need to do any of those validations yet. And, of and uh, it also has support for creating a virtual CPU, so we can create as many number of virtual CPUs we want. So what are the things we are working on? Our, right now, our focus are, there is a lot of work already going on. Uh, some of them is being done by Google and Susha uh, regarding the KVM unit test case enhancement. So we are working on uh, adding the KVM unit test for a CV, a CV ES, and a SNP. This work is already in progress, and we are also looking at enhancing the K self test to have the CV and a CV, SNP, and ES supports. Additionally, we are also looking into adding the CV support in the Avocado framework. We have been trying to implement those things. So, one of the and, and what is not supported is the restricted interrupt injection. So this feature is not yet supported in the current uh, SNP patch set, which we will be working after the base uh, is enabled. And uh, as uh, lazy validation basically is not supported, we will be looking into adding the lazy validation support in near future. And k exec support inside the guest is not supported. This is mainly because uh, I think I think this k exec support will require the lazy validation thing first, because one of the things which we want to avoid during the validation cycle is to double validate a particular page. So uh, we need uh, we need uh, some method of tracking which pages has been validated and not validated before we start uh, implementing the KXX support. Live migration support is, uh, is still not implemented. Uh, we will uh, start implementing the live migration support uh, uh, very soon. And uh, one of the uh, one of the limitation right now we have is that uh, we uh, SNP patches do not support the memory backing memory from a huge TLB. This is mainly because um, uh, uh, mainly because uh, there is no way to split the two meg pages from coming from the huge TLB. Uh, TLB. Uh, in case of uh, SNP, there are some pages uh, which need to be get splitted. For example, if a guest allocates a uh, one shared page or basically makes one shared page within a large page, then uh, then the only way to do that is the uh, spread the pages. And right now, he's still BFS doesn't support splitting. So we will be looking into uh, that area a little later. And another thing which is not yet supported is the virtual TPM support. So there there is a specification um, uh, posted by Microsoft on a SNP mailing list is called SVSM, where uh, where uh, where Microsoft is uh, proposing to make use of the VMPL level uh, uh, support from uh, offered by the SNP in order to support the virtual TPM. So this is these are the areas which we will be looking into implementing after the base SNP support lands in. 
That's all. Okay, thank you. That's all I have. Thank you so much for your time.